What is up, guys? My name, of course, is Carlo. Welcome yet to another tutorial. And I thought I'd do this tutorial because I've spoken to uh, quite a few people. What? Uh, um, uh, social media, um, some of the live streams I've done, and I'm quite shocked to still um, hear that people still don't know what rotoscoping is. Um, it's quite confusing. Um, so I thought I'd you know bring this uh, tutorial to you guys um just to show you in essence what rotoscoping is um i've just said you know i spoke to you know a couple of people in social media um i've spoken to uh, people on the live streams um and yeah there's still sort of you know when i mention rotoscope as part of a tracking feature um they still don't know what it is um so i'm going to basically show you what that is now so i'm just you know Giving you an example here, this is a trailer scene out of Lights Out. And in essence, the best way to explain rotoscoping is it's in essence create a collage. Now, if we look at this scene here, um, obviously it's a fixed image. Um, you know, the, the, the film has already been printed. So if I wanted to put something behind um, this character, um, how would I do that? I mean, you know, is that possible? Is it a possible way of doing that, shall I say? Um, and that's where rot rotoscoping comes into effect. So I am going to basically show you that now. So with my layer selected, I'm going to command D on a Mac um, to duplicate the layer. And then I'm just going to double click on this. It's going to bring up this window here. And this window here is where all the rotoscoping magic is going to happen. So if we look at the top here, we've got a little icon that says Roto Brush Tool. And we're simply gonna click on that. And what that's gonna give me, it's gonna give me this um, green, uh, in essence, dot. And using this green dot is gonna allow me to roto out uh, basically what I want to cut out, uh, if that makes sense. So if I get this Roto Brush here and, you know, neatly, Go around here, for instance, around here. In essence, what I want to do is I literally want to cut this character out. Um, now, if you get an option like this or a second like this, you're going to hold down the Alt. It's going to change our roto to a red, which means I can literally cut out what I don't want and slowly but surely um, fix uh, the roto in general until I get what I want. Now the purple indicates um, what part of the image we're going to cut out. So in essence, with this cut out, what I can now do is place something behind it. So I've got here a, a, a Diana still from Lights Out that I thought might be relevant. Um, and say for instance, I want to place her in the cupboard here. So I'm gonna drop this in between my layers right here. And now what I can do is because she's uh, cut out, I can literally move my character behind the actor or whatever you wanna um, uh, place, place, sorry, without getting too confused, uh, behind the actor, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, this tool is so powerful, um, it's frightening. Now, the thing with this is obviously we have to do it frame by frame, okay? So I'd go back to my Roto tool here. Um, if I come into my effects panel um, and just select on my top layer, here I'm gonna have all the um, relevant um, tools um, that I'm gonna need to finalize my Roto. So if we look at the, the harsh edges, for instance, if I bring that up, you can see my edges have been feathered out, um, which is giving it a more crisper look. So if we look down here, uh, we can change our options to a mat, sorry, to an alpha mat. Um, so we can really dial in, um, you know, the the, the roto um, that, that, that we're trying to achieve. So I can change the background to a white there. So I can really sort of look at the edges here and really sort of fine tune and feather out um, basically what I want uh, for the image, uh, which is, is, is absolutely amazing. It's, it's such a powerful tool. 
So if I go back to um, so reset that um, and then just click on that. Um, if I move this, as you can see, my original cut is still behind it. It's simply because we need to keyframe every moment of this. And this is where uh, rotoscoping becomes uh, very pain, painstaking, uh, shall I say. And a lot of people try and avoid it because it's very, very time consuming. But the beauty of it is, you know, you can get some really, really amazing results. Uh, by doing this. So in layman's terms, let me just switch all this off. Um, what we can do is literally go frame by frame um, and rotoscope what we need. So if I move uh, one frame over, if I can, uh, up here, we can move more than one frame. We're simply just gonna, you see here, as it's, it's come here, Motion detected um, at your we're gonna, door select our rotoscope layer again um, and then I can simply just uh, press all and just get rid of uh, this bit here and oh if I go a little bit over put it there so if I change to um, sorry not that one change it to the um, best possible option you can um, I can just literally uh, cut out what I don't need and literally just go um, frame by frame um, during the whole sequence of movement until I finished finish the actual composition um, and that will give me um, sort of like a final product if that makes sense um, so if I was to move it now um, you know the background um, is going to come out because I'm not rotating it yet so um, if I go to about here you can see just here, I've still got the original um, bottom image uh, showing. And that's basically, without confusing you guys too much, uh, what rotoscoping is. You know, within seconds, um, we've created uh, an image or an asset behind something um, um, in our feature or, or whatever we're trying to uh, create. So, as always, guys, if you have enjoyed this video, um, a like rating would definitely, definitely be appreciated. If you're not subscribed to the channel, smash the hell out of that subscribe button. And as always, I'll definitely catch you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.